During this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a simple poster using Publisher. If you look at the left-hand side, there is an option to start from a design. If I click on the drop-down menu, you'll notice that I can select the option by pl blank publications. And under that option, there is the option to select a poster. Now, although you can set up a poster this way, that's not actually the way I'm going to go about it. Rather, I'm going to close down the publication design window on the left hand side and instead I'm going to go to file and then down to page setup. Under page setup you will notice a variety of different publication types. The one I want to select is custom. I'm then going to select a landscape poster and then the two page sizes that I'm going to use which are two that work very well are 52 centimeters going across and 36 centimeters going up. If I just click somewhere else you'll see in the preview window on the right hand side that my poster is now established and it's going to consist of four overlapping A4 sheets of paper. A good poster should be simple. Try not to make it too complicated. If you put far too much stuff on the poster it can become confusing and you won't convey the message that you want to get across. Good posters are also visually appealing. You want people to notice it, you want them to want to look at it. So try and make it colourful and try and use lots of pictures in the poster. Also, try and keep words to a minimum. If you've written an essay on your poster, it's unlikely that anyone is going to read it. So try and summarise important points just to, in terms of a few key words rather than in terms of sentences. Also, when you do your writing, try and make sure that what you write is legible. A common mistake is to have a colourful background and then to put text on top of that background that can't be discerned once the poster is printed off. Finally, it is worth remembering one very important rule, and that is that a picture can summarise a thousand words. So try and use pictures appropriately. It's also worthwhile thinking about what you're going to do and coming up with some kind of plan. So what I've done is I've just scroll down beforehand on, on a piece of paper what I want my final poster to look like and I'll show you in a moment how I'm going to go about creating this. The first step in creating my poster is going to be choosing a background. If you go up to the format menu at the top and scroll down you can see a background option. The background option allows you to choose a colour and also a gradient for the background. Here are some various options that you can use. There are also other options available, if you click on the More Backgrounds um, link at the bottom, you can select other gradients, you can also select a variety of textures and presets, but in this case I want to select a picture. To select a picture, click on the Select Picture option, the one I'm going to choose here is Hubble, and if I click OK you will see that that is now selected as my background option. Having chosen a background, I can now start to assemble some of the elements of my poster, and I'm going to start by putting in some of the various pictures that I wish to use. On the left hand side, on this version of Publisher, there is an icon that allows me to add a picture frame. If I click on that, I can now create a box where I wish each picture to go, and then it's simply a case of choosing which picture I want to go into each particular box. Once you've inserted the pictures, it's then much, much easier after you've done that to start thinking about how you're going to format and edit the pictures. If you double click on a picture, it allows you to select a different picture to use instead. Right clicking gives you a series of options. For example, you could show the picture toolbar. This can be very, very useful. Um, if we look at the big picture I've got at the bottom right, one of the things that I want to do with this is I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, but I also want to trim this picture down a little bit. Now, the way you can do this is in the picture bar at the top, there is an option near the middle to crop the picture. If you select crop, you can now, by taking your mouse to the edge of the picture, actually crop the picture in the way in which you like. And then if you unselect crop, you can then resize the picture afterwards. Once you've finished placing the pictures where you want them, you can then start to add other elements to your poster. The next element I'm going to add is some arrows linking all of these things into a sequence. On the left hand side, there are a number of boxes that allow you to choose different shapes, lines, arrows, circles, squares, or auto shapes to your graph. I'm going to use an auto shape, and in particular I'm going to use block arrows in this case. The block arrow I'm going to use is the right arrow like so. And I can now add that to my graph just by 
dragging out the shape of the arrow. At the moment you'll see that um, it doesn't show up particularly well on my poster and this is because it's a black arrow printed against a predominantly black background. If I double click the arrow it brings up the format auto shape and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it in with a colour, in this particular case, one that stands out really well, red. You can also select the colour um, surrounding the outline of the arrow, but I'm just going to leave that as black. Um, it's possible to reshape your various things by clicking and dragging on the corners. In this particular case, I'm going to use this rotate button just above the arrow to turn it around like that, so that it points and links those two pictures together. Having added all of my arrows, I'm now going to give the poster a title. The best way of doing this is to use Word Art, and you can select Word Art once again using one of the icons on the left-hand side of the screen. If I click on it, it opens up a box that allows me to choose the style that I want. Don't worry too much about the colour at the moment because you can change that later. I'm going to select this one, click OK, and then it brings up a dialog box that allows you to enter your text. So I'm going to call this the Life of a star and then click OK and as you can see the word art has now appeared in the middle of the picture. What I can now do is just resize that like so and there's my title. If I double click on it it brings up the edit word text dialog box again. In this particular case I'm just going to alter it a little bit. I'm going to capitalize life I'm going to change it so that it now says a small star and click OK once again and there is the changed version. Right clicking on your word art allows you to format the word art and when you format it you can alter various aspects of it such as the colour, you can change the colour um, so that you've got solid colours or various fill effects such as gradients, textures etc. Similar to what we've seen earlier you can even put pictures in there. The final step in creating my poster is going to be to add some text to it. This time, rather than using word art, I'm going to insert a text box, which is one of the top icons on the left-hand side. If I click on that, I can now drag a box around the area where I want the text to appear. Now, if I enter my text, you will notice that actually nothing has yet appeared in the text box and the reason for that simply is that the text that I've written has appeared black and it's on a black background. The text by default also is very small, it's in font size 10 which is far too small for a poster. So what I'm going to do is highlight the text and I'm going to select a much bigger font size, in this particular case I think I'll select 24. I'm going to center the text, I'm going to make it bold, and then to make it stand out, I'm going to select the text so that it's white. And there we go. There are problems with it. It, it is against a background where there are lots of other white splodges um, representing the stars in the background picture. And one of the things I want to try and do is make the text that I'm writing a bit more legible. And the best way to do this, in this case, is either to choose a more appropriate background or simply to fill the text box. Um, if I double click on the text box, you will notice it brings up the format text box option. And what I can do at the moment, um, there's no fill selected. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it with the black. And that means that um, basically all of the stars behind it are, are, are removed. Um, and what I've actually written there um, is very visible against the background. And, and the black bends into the background very, very well. And this is my finished poster. Once you've got all of the elements on there, it's worth just spending a bit of time thinking about the layouts, thinking about how visible the various elements are, and doing a little bit of rearranging and final formatting. When you print off the poster, as already said, it will print onto four different sheets as shown here. It's then just a case of trimming down each of the sheets and sticking them together. If you want to look at what your final poster will look like, the poster that I've got here, you will see, has got lots of guidelines around it, lots of boxes, such as the purple and blue box going around the outside of the poster, and each of the boxes around the various text boxes. To get rid of those, if you simply go to View, you can remove the tick next to Boundaries and Guides, and that shows you a more accurate um, representation of what your final poster will look like.